Oh, they got QR scan too. Cool. So these came in really handy the other day because um, I did a bunch of these, got a bunch of quarters. So and, uh, I was dropping off uh, Linda at the 777 Main Street, the UNV Bank, whatever the name of it is called. Uh, it's pretty cool because uh, I was able to use some of them for the meters. Almost like it was meant to be. It's amazing how things work out though, isn't it? So believe it or not, the temperature has gotten better. It's not in, you know, way over 100, like 110 or 107. It's gotten down to like 90. It doesn't feel bad out right now at all. So pretty cool thing. So July 22nd kind of pulls down a little bit. I don't know. It can get hot though. Texas is a an extreme weather state. So it gets very, very hot, and then in the winter it gets pretty cold. But uh, it's cooled down a little bit, so it's got a, there's some mercy, a little bit of mercy. So the heat's kind of cooled down a little bit. Someone must have left their bike. Pretty cool bike. So at nighttime, a lot of those uh, shop carts, I mean, if you really hustled, you could probably make 20 bucks or so just get putting the shop carts up. I think they're called Carte Smarta or something like that. Carte Smarty. So they leave them out during the nighttime though. So you'd want to do, you know, you want to find, you would want to do that at nighttime to find them because people are just tired and a lot of the crew isn't here. So they just kind of leave them by the wayside. They just you know just go around now not you know i'm not saying like they're that way all night but they're going to be it's going to be more likely to find one of them you know to put up and most of all those things have quarters very rarely have i come across any of them that didn't have quarters so it's pretty cool to do and plus you know it's great exercise too you get a lot of steps in get a whole lot of steps in
so it's pretty much across here and straight down that way. Uh, they were just uh, two cats coming from Puerto Rico, took them back. My message, you know, to Hollywood and SAG and stuff, I hope they do get more money. I hope SAG actors and the union, they get more for all the actors and everything happens for them. But I want to talk about something else. I want to talk about quality. And like, you know, us YouTubers, you know, we know. <laughs> I mean, we know Hollywood movies are, be are better because, well, we're big fans of that. And we're big fans of the big actors and all that stuff. And how many really are there, you know? Um, but here's the difference between you and I. Yes, you have great movies where you spend billions of dollars on the movies and they're wonderful to look at, but you ain't doing it every day. We are. See what I'm saying? We know, we know, we, we know you're better, but we do it every day. So regardless of the quality of everything, who cares? The quality is only a minute different difference between whether they do it or not. And see, we do. That's the difference. We do every day. Every single day, we're following our dream. Because we are making movies every day. A movie is a motion picture with sound. And we do it every day, far more than you could ever dream of. You have nowhere near 1,700 movies, nor will you ever. If you're a Hollywood movie star watching this, you will never, ever touch a blogger in a million years. You won't even be in the same universe. We blew you out of the water by the time we passed 1,700 vlogs. Get it? We do it all the time. On that note, time for a commercial. What I suggest when you're on the road is Johnsonville smoked sausage. You can't get better sausage in the world. And also another thing, we do enjoy eating the food that we advertise. See the smile? Mm -mm. It's very good. It doesn't taste like dog food or anything. It tastes very good. Very good. No, seriously, it's pretty good. And also, if you look at vocal and screen time, we have probably a thousand times more than a Hollywood movie star does when it comes to a daily vlogger. Thousands of hours more. Okay, especially someone that uploads an, a three or four hour long movies per day. All right, we some of them do a feature film daily. Okay, that's 365 feature films daily because a feature film is only 45 minutes or more. And there's plenty of daily vloggers that do more than 45 minutes a day. So our screen time is a thousand times more than, than you would ever dream of. It's funny to, to go see who the mega stars are going to be in the future. It ain't going to be Hollywood. They'll be washed up begging for uh, uh, video game vocals. Probably about 10 years. It's going to be YouTube, baby. The YouTube vlogger. That's the new movie star. And you're listening to the voice of one of them.
Because by the time all this cash is out, I'll probably have as much money as Apple. What I meant to say was they do 365 feature films yearly, not daily. Well, on that one, so. So a daily vlogger can, can do easily 365 feature films worth of screen time yearly. Annually is what I meant to say. Not, you know, daily they do, you know, three or four hours daily. Which is what a movie star does almost yearly. Right? It's going to take time for it to switch financially. But, like... There are vloggers out there that are just as famous as a movie star would ever be. And they would know the vlogger's name. I'm talking about the new generation, the kids of today. They would know the vlogger's name far more than they would know some movie star name. I still go to the mall today and I go, have you heard of Bradley Cooper? And they go, no. I said, have you ever seen Gardens of the Galaxy? You know, Rocket, the little, he, that does the voice over it. Oh yeah, I didn't know that. What's his name? So you ever seen American Sniper? They're like, no. Even today. And I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm trying to be real. Okay? I'm trying to be real. I'm not trying to be mean. But it's true. There are a lot of people that don't even know modern day movie stars today because of social media and vlogging. It's a movie star's nightmare. When they're looking at my face right here, they're looking at something that's over them. Whenever it used to be the other way around. And I would look up, up at the movie screen and I would see something that was, that was like amazing. That's what they're seeing now. And they're threatened by us big time. Because YouTube is not only a major source of entertainment, but it's also one of the big techs. Like Apple's a big tech. YouTube is a big tech because it's part of Google. Google's a huge tech, which is taking over studio. See, what you're listening to is the new producer. See, I'm the one that has all the money. I'm just waiting for it to come in. And when it does, you'll be knocking at my door or trying to, and I'll be the one calling security and having you removed. Watch what happens. Just watch. Won't be now. I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about later. I'm talking about later, baby. One movie I really do appreciate, though, because I do like... Uh, Hollywood director, especially old school, is Robert Altman's The Player, which I think reminds me a lot of how I feel my life is currently. Because I do write screenplays. Um, and I, I do appreciate Hollywood movies. I'm, I'm not dissing it. I'm just saying that there's going to be a slow switch. And I'm not going to have to ask you for money. It's going to be the other way around. In the future, it will be. So lately... I've been feeling a lot like I'm in The Player. You know, if you've seen The Player. The Player is a movie that Robert Altman directed, which was about the dark side of Hollywood and the kind of struggle and paranoia of the screenwriter and what they go through at times and how the dark side of Hollywood kind of seeps into their life. It deals with all different types of angles. I highly recommend that movie. If I ever see that movie, I'm going to definitely go out and get it. Actually, to be honest, maybe one day I'll buy the original print. My aunt worked with Robert Altman. She was on uh, Dr. T and the Women. Yep, she was a, a, an extra, just like I was back in Hollywood time when I went there. I see, closer and closer I get to you. It's because my show just keeps airing every day. It just keeps on going up all the time. And I don't plan to make it stop. Not until I reach the top and completely, completely take over. See, I know I need to hold a little bit longer after I finish my sentence. I purposely mess up all the time to bother you. I don't want to make it your way. I'll make it my way.
There's Kitty. You're always right at the door waiting for your master. How you doing, Kitty? Being cute? You sure are. Hey, sweet pea. What? What? What's up? What you been doing? Hey, sweet pea. There he is. It's Edmund. Tuxedo Casabetti's. My pet. Cat. Lights, camera in action, it's all you need. And I'm sure you're hungry, aren't you? You're gonna kiss up and rub up against me? Earn your keep? How you doing, kitty? Smelling okay? Let's do this one right here. Today's cat commercial is brought to you by Sheba Cuts and Gravy with sustainable tuna. Let's open it. Shall we? We'll do half. Don't want to feed you too much, Edmund. Got to be responsible on how much I feed you. All right, now let's show everybody how much you love it. A little bit of light. There you go. Great. Good job, Edmund. You love it. That cat loves his food. You gotta keep on eating. Take another bite, there you go. Very good. Like it's irresistible. 